everybody. It's the Bill and Franz Show. Welcome to 2013. We're back. The St. Louis Blues are back. It's hockey season. Let's go Blues. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Bill and Franz Show. It's a new year. It's 2013. Bill and I are still here and we're still kicking with our boy Seth right here. We're going to get this party popping and jump off into this um, NHL lockout. Yeah, so basically the, uh, the owners locked out the players. We had four <laughs> months without hockey because they sat in boardrooms in New York City negotiating, then getting mad at each other, then negotiating some more, then storming out like grumpy uh, teenagers, and uh, they kind of went in circles like that for a couple months. Briefly, a couple of the major issues they were trying to battle out was, you know, who uh, dividing up the money between, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about it as billionaires versus millionaires, but, you know, they were trying to divide up the money. Uh, the players actually were getting a higher percentage in the, in the past. They were getting 57% of the revenues. Uh, now it's 50-50, which... Seems fair. But there were all kinds of other uh, elements on the table going back and forth between the owners. And a lot of these owners are trying to just make sure they can make enough money to, you know, stay in business and stay afloat. Hike is a pro sport. I mean, how, how much money does it bring in annually? The revenues last year were the highest they've been. And so that's one of the really disappointing and just mm. frustrating and, quite frankly, Confusing. dumb things. Yeah. That, yeah. that the league didn't get this done in September when they were supposed to. By cutting off so much of the season, they've really hurt mm. themselves here. And so um, revenues were up quite a bit, and they're going to have some work work to make up right now because there's a bunch of fans who, who aren't going to come back right away, I don't think. I, I mean, I would imagine four months of no money coming in, and I mean, depending on how much came in last year, I would be a little sick too, you know, I want, yeah. I want my money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. hopefully they've got the financial health of the league figured out now. <laughs> yes. All right. So the so the lockout's <laughs> over. Everyone's playing. Some teams are um, some teams are making more money. You notice we're all wearing blue because this is St. Louis, and we love the St. Louis Blues. So what's the story Cheers. for them? Um, so the the outlook for the Blues as we start this short season uh, looks good. Looks good. They're they're returning the same team from last year. Okay. The guys all know each other. They know the coach they're playing for, <clears throat> who they were extremely successful under last year once he was hired. They had the best record in the league once he was hired. So they got that going for them. The other thing that they have going for them that's going to be really important is they have two very talented goalies. And playing so many games, playing 48 games in you know nine in about 100 days or so, um, they're going to uh, you're going to need two talented goalies. The teams that only have one, <coughs> one and a half, they're not going to they're not going to make it. So that's something that seems really good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Go Blues. Go Blues. And they're going to be all really skinny skinny players at the end because that's a that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of sweat. Yeah, there's a lot of protein shakes that are going to have to be down. <laughs> Speaking of protein shakes, let's move on to the the boys Science. of summer. Um, uh, just recently, you may have heard that the um, Baseball Hall of Fame, and they chose no one. Shut out. Decline. Nobody. And you know why? Because now they're reviewing mostly people from the 90s, and you know what the 90s are? And early 2000s. That's the special protein shake era. <laughs> special protein shake era. <laughs> so let's see who did not get nominated into the mm. Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds. Oh. No big surprise there. <laughs> Mark McGuire. <gasps> Once again. <gasps> no big surprise there. Everyone's favorite, Sammy Sosa. Oh my also God. Also not nominated. My English not so good. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and my personal favorite, Roger Clemens. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, you know, oh, oh my, uh, actually even more favorite than him for, for a different reason. Just as a side note, also not nominated, <laughs> Kurt Schilling. Yes. More but not favorite. because of juicing, just because... <laughs> No one cares. Anyway, so of course, you know, some of these guys really were powerful players, but they are condemned um, to possible obscurity due to the fact that they, they were um, using... Or suspected. I mean, just, just I think that to kind of cut, yeah. cut to the heart of the matter a little bit, one of the weird things about, you know, them not voting anyone in this class is that this was the first time the, the baseball writers had the chance to pass judgment on this whole class of players. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there are guys who we pretty much no juiced but they're kind of lumping the whole class together and saying that well you were in this era and we're not sure you look like you were bulked up so we're just going to not let anybody in and it's a weird place to be because mm -hmm. 
they don't you don't know how to you don't know whether to evaluate someone as having having done it or just assume right. they all cheated. Right. I guess it's seen guilty by association. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, really. I don't think they know what to do. I don't think most of them know what <laughs> yeah, to do. In right. fact, exactly. in fact, a handful of them didn't submit a ballot at all because they didn't Oops. even feel like they should be the arbiters of this. Whoa, that's an Whoa. interesting protest. Which I think is an interesting way. A protest non-vote. Yeah. Right. Abstention. Right. Um, and also, I mean, there's the obvious thing for a lot of people is, you know, I mean, these guys were major, major sluggers, a lot of them, or pitchers. But um, it makes you think, should there be an, uh, uh, you know, side, side box or asterisk section for the Hall of Fame for the right. also note kind of people? And it, it's, it's worthy of noting. I mean, it's interesting. Even if you don't approve of them, it's an interesting story. I wasn't really sure how I felt about it. But, you know, now that you say that, honestly, you, you know, there's the idea that the Hall of Fame is only for, you know, Babe Ruth and... and uh, those Derek other guys, and Willie Ty, Mays and Ty Cobb, who of course <laughs> right. was who, who of course was a saint. Oh yeah, for those Ty of Cobb. you who know that. But he didn't um, juice. Yeah, but yeah, but he didn't take any steroids. <laughs> um, I mean, personally, I think it would be more reasonable. And I mean, if 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 baseball is the great American game, the grand mm-hmm. old game, right. why not have the Hall of Fame be a place that's a, a history museum yeah. that talks about what went on? Mm-hmm. Have a wing of well, here's what went on with guys who were suspected but he, let's still like acknowledge their existence and their statistics yeah, right. like to not acknowledge Pete Rose and his 42,000 yeah. 4200 Excellent plus example. hits mm-hmm. right. it's just it's just bizarre really it's kind of an alternate re- world yeah i mean all, everything that Pete Rose is known for that's bad is i mean mostly off the field obviously when he was on the field he was behaving mightily right and he was he was some, someone really worthy of looking up to mark mcguire still knocked that ball out the park yeah. That's why we have McDonald Land. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, Mac Land. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, so really, you should just give these guys these their achievement, and like like Bill said, put an asterisk next to it. And Mark McGuire is one of the guys. Actually, you know, we diss him, but we're in St. Louis. We have to give him credit for you know he manned up. He's like, I'm probably not going to get the Hall of Fame. I'm I'm at peace right. with that. I I I admitted it. You know, there was a big controversy about it, That's but true. in retrospect, you know, after his after his. Uh, Staying to Congress, I'm not here to talk about the past, which was a pretty right. bizarre. Yeah, well. I like that too. I like how you did that. <laughs> talk about the past, brother. Let's move forward to the future. There you go. <laughs> I think there's a lot of pe- players, whether they're baseball, football, basketball, that um, use um, performance enhancement, performance drugs, enhancing drugs. Yes, and PEDs. PEDs. But hey, this is the world we live in because this is the type of pressure these athletes are under. They have to perform. You know, some of these contracts are really complicated. For, for a football player, exact, I mean, for a running back, he has to have so many yards by the end of the right. season or how many touchdowns. So it's a lot of pressure under that. So before you judge them cats right there, you know, look at yourself, homies. On that note, let's take a break. <laughs> right Peace. Between falling stars Brothers, preachers, and bootleggers' sons Oh, it hurt when they fell I was so small, I hardly knew They came to do good and did well
Sometimes there's even parades It never Welcome back to the Bill and Fran Show. We talked about the NHL. We talked about the baseball juicers. Now we're going to talk about uh, more consequential stuff uh, from Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas, such as the United States of America overall. Um, <laughs> there was a, um, a shooting, you may have heard, in Connecticut, which is my home state, and also several other places, including recently everyone's favorite city, St. Louis, Missouri. Right. Vice President Joe Biden led a uh, team to decrease gun violence. So um, he came up with a few things and brought it to the president. And the president has recently um, started with a, an executive order. And we're going to go down those points, a list of points. Universal background checks. It's just it's just been ridiculous that you you know if you if you buy a gun at right. an official gun shop you have to have a background check but if you go to a private gun show right now there's like the world the, the biggest one annually in Las Vegas going on right now you don't have to have a background check everything they suggest somehow the NRA has a reason to oppose it they oppose common sense that should have been done a long time ago exactly but common sense evades a lot of us not us. Biden, them but the you <laughs> <laughs> if you're the president of the nra we're speaking to you yeah clown let's go ahead all right so <laughs> next one this is a common sense one i don't think we have to dwell on this one too much they want to limit the amount of uh, ammo 10 bullets to a clip and i totally agree with that all right yes next is an assault <clears throat> weapons ban well let's that's talking about they're talking about renewing the assault weapons ban that, that yeah. was enacted under clinton yeah down. that's common sense right there if i'm going duck hunting one round. I don't need to put 20 rounds in the duck because I messed up the meat. <laughs> and if you do need that, you're not, you're not much of a sportsman, <laughs> yeah, are you're you? You're not hunting right. very well. Look, honey, I brought home a feather. Now, here's an executive order that is a crackdown on gun trafficking. Now, I'm assuming what this means is that he's going to use his executive power to uh, enforce the laws already in place more strongly. The, the executive power <clears throat> often means taking what the legislation has provided and right. focusing your attention on particular things because some things get neglected and some things don't. So he's like, let's really focus on this because it's important. Right. I think that it also, I think that's right, Bill, and I think that it also deals with um, removing removing some of the um, barriers that were keeping different agencies from communicating together. That makes sense, too. Crack down on the trafficking. That's right. Do that. Okay, and here's one that the NRA can support, <clears throat> and that is improving our mental health services. Apparently, I believe today President Obama said that uh, we need to make access to mental health care services as easy as access to a gun currently right. is in the United States of America. Does Perhaps it... even easier. We definitely need it because um, the shooter from the um, theater, he, hell, you can look at him and see he needs some help. He look crazy. Here's the last bullet point we've got here. Increased funding for school safety and security. Anyone want to elaborate on that? Policemen, sometimes with guns, sometimes with sometimes not, but have them more kind of integrated into this community right. where you can have a police officer, maybe kids get to know some get to know a cop and not just see him as someone to avoid on the street or the guy who tells he and his friends to go to get out of here and and, and scatters. Another common sense move. You hear that NRA? Common sense. 
I'm mm-hmm. with that because I uh, my daughter, she's four, and in her school, there's a police officer already set up every day. He's there. Real cool dude, you know? Mm-hmm. But after this shooting, it was, I mean, I... I I, didn't, I guess I didn't really trip off him before the shooting. I mean, it was cool he was there, but I'm really relieved that he is there now. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Seth, tell us, what do you think of the NRA's latest actions and um, words? I, I think that there's a chance they might be against some of these common sense proposals. They released an advertisement today criticizing President Obama. I believe they called him an elitist... Elitist um, hypocrite. That was it. Thank you. They called him an elitist hypocrite. Wow. And the reason being is that President Obama's daughters are protected by the Secret Service in schools, but your children aren't protected by guns in schools. Does President Obama think that his daughters are more important than your children? Do you think your children are more? You know. There's just so <laughs> many issues. It's that that little thing brings up so much for me. Um, I mean, hey, it's like, well, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but sometimes, you know, when you have the leader of the free world, their family needs more protection because he's really important and you're, right. you know, more important than the average schmo. Uh, uh, sometimes psychopaths who are opposed to him sometimes get crazy with guns and want to shoot them more than they do want random people. When I listen to the um, NRA gift, the guy, the, what's his name? Wayne LaPierre. Wayne LaPierre, say what he said. I was just thinking, man, I must be at Barnum's and Baby Circus. Because this clown <laughs> up here, man, all he needs is the makeup. He's a perfect clown. He's a mean clown, though. He is a very <laughs> mean <wild>. clown. <laughs> like, like Obama said today, President Obama said today, enough is enough. Well, I don't even think it's just, I don't even think it's just, I mean, when, when the NRA starts talking stuff about that, well, you know, they make veiled threats about the children, and then they also... You know, then you have the overall gun movement wanting to have in some sort of gun-loving demonstration in Washington, D.C., very close to the inauguration. It's just like I, they, I think they're really out to get Obama, and it's that's huh. that's relatively paranoid. See, it knocks you. It does. That. It's just right. the bad just, vibes in the room. The right? vibes. It's ridiculous. Well, I just, you know, it is really, it is really ridiculous, <laughs> but I will say briefly that the NRA talks about itself like it's a member organization, but really, that's really what they are. Is they're they're a, a defacto, lobby group. They're a lobby group for gun manufacturers. Here's news for you, America. That's not going to happen. Right. No one's coming to take away your guns. Right. President Obama has actually been, up until now, one of the most generous towards the NRA presidents, <clears throat> um, to the to the displeasure of many liberals. Point blank, we know that the NRA is. Pretty much a bunch of lobbyists, like my man said right here. But I look at them as clowns because simple fact is that they're gonna they wanna put profit over safety. And come on man, y'all done made a lot of money. There's three hundred million guns on the street. How much money do you want? And speaking of making a lot of money without a lot of values <laughs> how's Kanye doing? Kanye West star power is going down. Ever since he hooked up with Kim Kardashian Fans and people are coming out against him, and his popularity is going down. What do you guys think about that? Why? How can that possibly happen? Dating his woman. People may just be getting sick of Kanye. Yeah. Hey, well, I don't know because they call it the Kardashian curse. They said <laughs> Rage. They said Reggie Bush, uh, Chris Humphries, these guys that dated her before, popularity started going down when. She, they started oh, dating really? this girl. It's so a trend. It's a trend. Interesting. So, is it the Kardashian curse or? You know, I mean, I've, I'm a fan. Some of my favorite rock stars over the years have been criticized for the women they've dated. You know what? It's none of your business. If, she, if yeah. he wants to, if he wants to marry or sleep with Kim Kardashian, and you don't approve, who cares what you think? That's the Bill and Fry show right there. We keep it live and we take it around the world because that's what we do. That's what we do. So we're doing the Bill and Franch show. Happy New Year. (laughs) Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers!